Yeah, 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 na, 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 yeah. Certain fire flames, now nah, born again. Times really change, talk truth. We seen better days, use not safe again. What a damn shame, talk truth. I want that them are promo, so quick them selling out, them sold them cashing out. Yeah, well, this is Kemetic 9 representing for I Just Star and the Mindset. If you now move right, get your mind checked. Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to I Just Stars The Mindset. Today I want to take you on a journey, one that promises to transform lives across Africa. Our mission is simple yet profound, empowering communities, celebrating culture and nourishing lives. Over the next seven months, we'll be traveling to seven different countries, connecting with Rastafari elders, documenting their incredible wisdom and celebrating their rich cultural heritage. But our mission goes beyond just interviews and storytelling. In Ghana, where the streets echo with the laughter and resilience of homeless children, we extend our hand. Through our campaign, we aim to provide nourishment, education and hope to these young souls. Picture this. A child who once wandered the streets now has a place to learn and grow. That's the power of collective effort. Our vision is to create a ripple effect of positive change extending beyond Ghana to touch the lives of children all across Africa. Imagine communities uplifted, traditions preserved and compassion sown like seeds in fertile soil and this is where you come in. We invite you to join us in this mission. Together, we can uplift communities, preserve traditions and sow seeds of compassion. Let's be the change we wish to see in the world. world. If, if you, you resonate, resonate with, with our, our cause, cause, we, we invite, invite you to support us. Your contribution, whether big or small, will make a difference. Visit our GoFundMe page to donate and share our journey with your friends and followers on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. Every pound counts and together we can create lasting impact. Thank you for being part of I Just Stars The Mindset. Let's spread love, love, hope and positivity, positivity across, across Africa, Africa and beyond. beyond. Stay, Stay blessed. blessed. A little. Um, so it's by chance, really, basically, you know, just listening to what they are saying. It's by chance that, by chance and goodwill, um, that Rastafari, the community, have the house to use along with um, the Ethiopian um, Virgin ancestrines. But nothing, nothing is by chance, you know. We've, we're talking about the divine, you know, because. For example, the local council, they just um, flippantly invited the ethnic minority senior citizens, Bemska. They just said, oh, um, have a look at Fairfield House when they needed a premises. They didn't connect that to people of the Caribbean, to people of the African diaspora. Mm. The Emperor Haile Selassie is a giant. They didn't connect this. And so it just happens that this treasured gift to the city of Bath has been protected by an organization that you know is rooted in serving first the Caribbean elderly people of Bath we've got Indian community of Bath Chinese community of Bath and people from all across the world um, that live in the city of Bath elderly people that reserve the, the services of Bemska um, and that and their welcoming spirit of Pauline amongst this amongst these community people, leaders such as Sister Waleti and Ras Bandeli, and then on the Ethiopian community, Kifle, Ezra, Fisiha, Abi, and others, Belete, they uh, were also, you know, voicing for Fairfield House, you know, and, and championing it. Um, there's been many friends and supporters of Fairfield House, you know, within the Rastafari community, many, many friends and elders um, that have passed through that I haven't mentioned, but they all deserve a mention. You know, everyone that has, has played their part is very important. And so you can imagine, because of this, all this activity from different communities, Fairfield House is a busy place because during the week we have the elderly and we have the social purpose organization. So we have a brain injury association that's resident there, a charity that helps women get back into the workforce that's based there, and other charities, all for social purpose, you know, like a charitable purpose um, for the people of Bath. Mm. And they have their headquarters there. 
And so this is, um, that's what's happening during the week. And then it tends to be on a Saturday or maybe a Sunday, depending if it falls on an important day. We could have a community celebration that's been arranged. And these are usually open for all to attend as well and um, to experience different cultural celebrations at Fairford House. And now through the year on Sundays, importantly, we deal with the heritage aspect. So we have tours, we have historical guided tours for visitors about the history of the emperor and his family. And we've developed a museum and heritage spaces in the house for visitors. Um, so there's a new exhibition, for example. And um, even this Sunday, um, or whatever Sunday this plays, if you look online, you may see on our website that we're doing the tour, you know, and people can come along for that. They get the history of the emperor for over an hour journey around his home and his family home. And then they can have lunch with us and then just enjoy the atmosphere, you know. So it's a very, um, it's very emotional and um, uh yeah, rev revelatory experience for many visitors, actually, um, to be immersed in the life of Emperor Haile Selassie. It's quite a special and unique experience in the world. Yes, I. Yeah, man. Powerful. 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 Um, the, 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 the I know about um, St. Hagnes Place in London. Uh, I know about it from community members. Um, you know, uh, that's I do, that's my experience of it. So, for example, as a young younger Rastafari, I'm 36 now, um, but I hear stories from my elders around me um, and important community leaders in their different organisations, and they're almost words of warning, and they often reference St Agnes Place. Um, so this is, you know, we keep these things in our consciousness as lessons to to learn from, you know, and not repeat mistakes um so fairfield house doesn't slip into any kind of jeopardy from those aspects rastafari yeah because um you know we, we when when you look at fairfield house and and, and then you reflect you reflect on saint agnes place it it it, it would have um not all probably the same significant but you know similar in a in in a sense um knowing that you know it's it's a it's a place where rastafari you know the community gather and organize and 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 um do a lot of activity there but you know that has been taken away due to um behavior you know and 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 hill characters i i you know i i will say but um yeah you know we have to we have to use um our our past history as example and um uh, make sure that we don't slip into you know into into what has happened before yes i yes my king all right um his majesty and 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 his divinity um does it go beyond the bible you know just looking at the bible more while when you read it sometime it 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 it's you know it's contradicting itself sometime does his majesty divinity go beyond um the bible what's your what's your thoughts on that Personally, I think um, my instant reaction is to say no, you know, because within the Bible, there's infinite scope, you know, for um, for to, to cite his majesty's divinity and to know his majesty and to know who his majesty is as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And so I think that just like his majesty says, said in this country you know my part is to glory in the bible um that's i uh, for sure like all of our parts you know if if we're citing it within that framework is within 
that biblical story. Um, so I, I, I think that there's also human aspect, like to the divine altogether. Um, you know, his majesty has asked that question and he tells people that considering um, the almighty to go into the secular world. And that to me is very, very meaningful. Um, like it resonates because of some of my experiences on this trot um, and experiences at this time fulfilling this role at Fairfield House. Because it's not, my faith drives me, you know, it's like the thing that will make me push further and further um, mm. in what I could achieve for His Imperial Majesty um, there, you know, and, uh, and using both the house and myself as an instrument, you know, to show the world what happened to this man, what he experienced, what um, his challenges that he overcame were, and how he inspired others. And that's not just Ethiopians, it's worldwide. And I think that if there's divinity or you can find divinity within the secular world, that's very deep because obviously um, his majesty has had to administrate and to lift up Ethiopia and to be like a visionary modernizer. Um, and there's so many challenges in that, in that task and he's still able to see and feel the almighty's presence, you know, in, in, a, in the secular world. So certainly from my experience, I can see many things that um, from the Bible and then likewise from his majesty, because his majesty to me is like, I can see the whole of the Bible in his majesty and his life and different portions reflecting themselves. So um, then that reflection also, I then cite in some challenges, you know, with um, organizing or disruption or disloyalty or things that don't seem possible. And, you know, you are under pressure to achieve them. Um, and you you find a closer relationship in the to the Almighty, and you almost know, or you're striving to know, humanity better. And I think that there this is this isn't without outside the Bible, but there is other aspects to the Emperor's divinity. So, for example, you know, there's a famous documentary. Um, I say famous, but famous for I and I, you know, um, footsteps of the Emperor made by. Um, a great brethren and mentor of mine, you know, Professor Sean Naptali Sobers, Haile Mariam, his baptismal name. Um, he made this documentary over 20 years ago, interviewing residents of Bath. And in, within that documentary are testimonies. And there's a man, and he says that he'll never forget this experience of being in the presence of someone that was more than a man. You know, um, and talking about his eyes, a sense of truth, honesty, perfection. This isn't, that's like, he might not even be talking within a framework of, a Bible, of the Bible, but he's citing in his language what he saw in his imperial majesty. And you will find so many of these testimonies. And one of the projects that we've been doing at Fairfield House is actually recording these testimonies. Um, and people that met the emperor, and we've recorded in modern time news stories about um, this from this angle of people, you know, feeling um, very unique experience when they were in the emperor's presence. Powerful. Um, I, 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 I saw you. I saw you online. I'm um, talking about this. This little goal, goal stick that his Majesty gave to um to was it a scottish girl uh, uh she was from ireland ireland she was, um, she was she was a nurse in bristol and yeah it's an amazing story um we as part of the tour of the house you know you see this object and you i'll, I'll give a very brief rundown essentially his majesty gifted this nurse uh very small golden stick. It looks like a knitting needle, a large knitting needle almost. And um, 
he said to her very something mystic when he gave it. He said, or inte- he intended to give it because he said, I'm going to send it to you. And he said, it's not the material value of this object. It's what it will do for you. And the lady thought that was very strange. And then she was getting on board a ship to Ireland and she had received this package from the emperor. And she opened it and was, she was holding this golden stick and she dropped it. She chased after it on the deck of the ship. And that very moment, the ship was raked by Nazi machine gun fire. Wow. Um, and people lost their lives. And so this lady, Irish lady, up to her late 80s, she said that the only reason that she lives and breathes is because Emperor Haile Sassi gifted her this golden stick and it represented him as a man of prophecy. And so one could say, you could, you could come at that and say, oh, that's, you know, not within the Bible framework. Mm. But if the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah gives you an object and can, you know, have, you know, he can see, he, so he's proven, you know, World War II is broken out at this time. Um, you know, it's, it, his prophetic ability and his f- in tuneness with the frequency of what is going to happen to to you know in the future is very accurate and so i still think it would fit within the framework because he's the return messiah you know and so there's what isn't possible um in that but on a more historical level obviously we recorded that testimony to be honest it totally blew my mind because i think we all can and in every stage could be with these conceived ideas about his majesty and he will open our minds in all these aspects you know and and is wider and greater than we've ever been you know by actually trusting in him um and it's yeah it's it's, a, it's amazing to now be able to use that story um to show who his majesty was in a more human aspect and something people, very surprising to people but that also reflects his um his place in in history in world war ii yes i yes i um <laughs> yeah based on what they are saying you know, it, it 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 made me develop probably about three different questions in my head now, different from what I have right down here in front of me. But, um, all right, so wh- when the I said that now, wh- wh- what's your thought on when His Majesty say that, you know, um, human doesn't emanate from, um, from a deity? Yes, I um Bill McNeil, 1967, Royal Train interview. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about here, yeah. Um, So it's important, you know, the the interview of Bill, he says, um, Your Majesty, there are many Christians throughout the world who see you as the return of Jesus Christ. And His Majesty says, I've heard that idea, which is one thing. And he says, I've also met certain Rastafarians. Mm Mm-hmm. And I told them, man is mortal, will be replaced by the oncoming generation. And human beings should never make the mistake of assuming or pretending that uh, deity um, emanates from the divine, you know, a human being, you know, all the other way around, human being emanates from a deity. Yeah. Um, And um, so it's very mystic. Um, answer because first thing we have to know is <laughs> his majesty he doesn't answer the question you know he he gives a teaching um which reflects in the bible when people are asking yes as christos you yeah know, are you the messiah you know mm-hmm. and they he just turns them away and you know it's what is what you say what do you say that i am you know um that that sort of scene um but the also we have to know that you know, there is a trace of Christians throughout the world, you know, citing his majesty in this way also, stemming from his place in World War II um, and what happened in those years and what he was able to achieve after that. 
um, and his output as well, what he represented for peoples of the world. Um, so there's those elements, but His Majesty has also given us a critical teaching. This is my, my personal belief, is that um, the very essential message to take away is about the impermanence of the human body and um, you know we might not see him but the almighty is in everything you know the almighty is is forever you know this is omnipotent you know it's not just if you don't see him mm. Because it's not an image, you know, thing. This is actually an output, you know, a frequency. Um, True. And so, yeah, it's, that's, that's very important, I think. Yeah, there's, there's, there's layers and layers. I, I, I've, I've done a whole reasoning um, podcasting about that for about an hour or two hours. Yes, sir. That's the far right. So, so, all right. So, based on that then, because um, you, 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 you have a lot of RAS that um oppose the bible and 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 burn the bible you know what i mean um what oh you see that do you see that as ignorance or what do i view uh i think that everyone is just reflecting the stage that they are in their journey you know um and it's also a choice because it's you know, where do you want to stand in relation to his majesty, you know, um, and how close do you want to get to him, you know? Um, there, there is that choice out there also. But I think that um, for me, it's like, a, you know, my perception of the origins of the Rastafari faith, Rastafari movement, mm. is um, from Ethiopianism, you know, through transatlantic slavery, ones being stripped of their identity as Africans mm -hmm. and the practice of being put into the biblical framework you know, by the slave master, but then understanding that you're Ethiopians because of the mystics of the timing of the King James and that, you know, those words being throughout and knowing that Ethiopia is the land of black peoples and that development of that through emancipation um, to the Marcus Garvey times in the 1920s and the times of the Ethiopianists in the 1930s, you know, and that moving, that shift towards the emperor. So for me, is you, you know, everyone in the Caribbean knows that His Majesty also is called the king. And people maybe take that lightly. They think, oh, Rastafari is just saying that. But obviously, factually, His Majesty is called the King of Kings and has the title the Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And the reason why these titles are special is because they come from the Bible. Mm. So, you know, that's, that, it can't really be missed. Like, if you want the fullness um, from His Majesty, there's so much, even in his words and his speeches, He's echoing scripture many times. And when you read the scripture, you will then realize, oh, wow, his majesty said something very similar, you know, and you start looking it up and you find it's in the Proverbs and, you know, um, then his selected speeches or, or in the Gospels and selected speeches or important utterances. You know, his majesty is echoing them all the time. So it helps you be more grounded if you want to be close to his majesty rastafari right. because all right because is it is it is a similar thing when you look on um the church and and his majesty right and 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 the movement because his majesty as we know is a is a is a christian king right yes sir and within 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 rastafari you have you have some rastafari virgin and sistering who um go into the church because his majesty sent the church um in in jamaica in at, at a very pivotal time a critical time zine so you mm -hmm. you, you find 
burgeoning and sistering going into the church who, who were Rastafari burgeoning and sistering, who were Naya Bingi um, burgeoning and sistering. Um, so, oh, 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 do you see now that a, a lot of ones still wouldn't um, go the distance seen as going into the church and 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 become becoming baptized as as his majesty have have done and 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 many other rastafari virgin and sister yes sir i think at the very least and you should respect his majesty his views and i think you should respect his words and i think that even if you you weren't ready, you were not at that stage, even if you won fire. Um, that, that should be um, very thoughtful um, and considerate in terms of like, what exactly are you upset with? You know, what exactly, um, you know, isn't working for you? Because His Majesty, you know, he's saying that in any version of the Bible, the message is one and the same. It's eternal. So there are differences, you know, here, but there's a there's a crucial message. So I think that to be with Christ is the most important thing, you know, in that sense, you know, with with His Majesty, with the Divine, with the Almighty, and to have that in your consciousness, you know, the Lamb and the Lion in the fullness. That's that would be, you know, um, that would be the least. But obviously. Look, the first thing that's important to address um, is that, you know, His Majesty sent the church to the Caribbean in Trinidad because the people, African people in the Caribbean, are asking for an authentic Christian tradition, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, in Jamaica now, as we know, His Majesty had long-standing relationships with Rastafari. You know, there's references that you can see that Rastafari attending the coronation mm -hmm. of the emperor, you know. So his majesty had a long-standing relationship with Rastafari brethren and awarded them gold medals. And at the same time, obviously, there was riots, there is a tension in Jamaica between the colonial government or new government of Jamaica um, against Rastafari, and all across the Caribbean, in fact, you know. And so Rastafari resisting that with the same Ethiopian spirit, you know, fighting the colonizer. And His Majesty has sent the church into the midst of that also, which is a contextual thing, you know. Um, and it's, it's a message uh, about conduct, you know, and about faith and about um, his way, because there's... There's things that you learn within the Ethiopian tradition, studying the emperor. Um, things like it's very offensive to raise your voice within his majesty's culture, you know. It's very offensive to raise your voice. Um, so, obviously, for, <laughs> for our lives, um, this, uh, this, is a, this is a challenge. Like, this is something that we have to adjust to, you know. And See. it's the same within our view of the Bible with an our view of the Almighty and so forth. Because if we're citing his majesty as the Lion of Judah, um, and we, you know, all this evidence, because there's a lot of evidence within the Ethiopian tradition, um, you know, for example, just quickly, at the coronation of the emperor, they sang, may your reign be for 1,000 years, you know. Um, straight from the book of Revelation, there's many artworks, there's many symbols, architectural symbols. Um, there's many things that the emperor left there that weren't, that were like cryptic messages that were to be revealed through education. And I believe there's many more as well. Um, and so there's all this evidence of that his majesty is who he is. So if, if that's how we're citing it, then to follow that through, we know that the glory is through the slain lamb and you have to wash your clothes in the blood of the lamb you know and for salvation you know and to be in that you know eternal element thousand years government with his majesty and um, this is a requirement of that you know rastafari 
have their place, just Rastafari alone, the tradition, is very important because we've got to understand a wider context thing, is that his majesty's name has been tried to be extinguished in the world. Mm. And Rastafari prevented that from happening and it prevented every day from happening. Um, so this is a fact also. So Rastafari have their place. The church also betrayed his majesty in some aspects. And we know that, you know, there was Ethiopians and Rastafari, an elder that both you and I interviewed, Amdi Zion, um, who exited or was forced to exit the church in that time of the revolution time of the Derg. Yeah. Um, so there was, you know, but the faith, the church is in Christ, you know, that's what his majesty says. So. It, that, this is what we've got, uh, you know, it's not just a bill, it's not really a building, it's not one organisation, and and we're also very bruised um, peoples, you know, and so experiences can, can and just in, within my own framework, you have a vet, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to this country I, I wanted to leave I, I was in the Caribbean for a long time you know and I just didn't want to come back to the UK at all you know so that these things change and develop because the almighty revealed to I that I also have a place to fulfill you know and you um, are where where you need to be in the in that picture Rastafari, yes, I. Time to rise. Time to open up your third eye. Full time you start to realize that all this time they've been telling us one bag of lies. Telling us a God in the sky that for you and I, he die. Jenko Jesus, oh me, oh mile. These things they taught us from we were a child. Fars indoctrinating the innocent minds. Mind control is the signs of the time. Android, cyborg, AI, all these things combined. All these things combined might sound like a rhyme. But the evidence reality is right before your eyes. Under no disguise. The age of Aquarius is the shifting of the time. Sun, moon, stars, the planet in the cosmos align. As the cosmos align, Low vibration frequency decline. You strengthen your mind. Access to knowledge information from the Almighty Creator Divine. Creator Divine. The time arise. I feel with time for rise. The time appointed. Because I'm anointed. The time arise. I feel with time for rise. The time appointed because I'm anointed. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I just start the mindset.